Today for EM and 5, we're going to talk about eye trauma. So first you're going to get the full history. Was this blunt trauma, penetrating trauma? Could there have been any flying debris that would cause foreign bodies? You're going to do a full eye exam. And also with the help of some adjuncts like the slit lamp and maybe some other tests like ultrasound or CAT scan, you should be able to come up with your diagnosis. And the main thing we're looking for here is any signs of ocular emergency, such as open globe, that would require you to place an urgent phone call to opto. So let's go through the full exam and point out some abnormal findings. Let's start with pupillary exam. So normal pupils should be equal, round, and reactive to light. But what if we shine the light in the affected eye and neither of them constrict? This is actually concerning that the eye is not sensing light and therefore there might be an issue with either the retina or the optic nerve. For the retina, in the setting of blunt trauma, this would be concerning for retinal detachment, and you can actually look for this in the ED with ultrasound. For the optic nerve, it could be a little more serious. In blunt trauma, this would be concerning for a retrobulbar hematoma, and this is where there's a buildup of blood in the orbit behind the eye, and the only place for it to go is out, so it forces the eyeball out, stretches the optic nerve, causing that afferent pupillary defect, and is definitely an ocular emergency. Call up the right away, and you need to perform a lateral canthotomy. Now what if our pupil is not equal? Say we shine light in both the eyes and we see this, where one of the pupils is still dilated. In the setting of significant blunt head trauma, this is actually really serious. It could be a subdural hematoma causing uncle herniation. And with that pressure on the third cranial nerve, it inhibits parasympathetic output and the ciliary muscle doesn't constrict. Now what if this is the case? A patient who is very well appearing comes in and says two days ago they were punched in the face and now they're having some pain to the eye and their pupils seems dilated. This is actually not too concerning. It's probably traumatic iritis and will heal on its own. Now what if we look at the pupil and it's not round? So say this is our exam. This is called a teardrop pupil. And what happens is a flying piece of debris that actually penetrates through the cornea and causes this little tear in the iris right here, causing it to look like a teardrop shape. If you see this, this is concerning for open globe. So if you see a teardrop, call opto. All right, next let's look at visual acuity, and we're gonna assess that with a Snellen chart, and if they can't do that, see if they can see how many fingers you're holding up. If they can't do that, just see if they can detect light or dark. And there's a lot of different things that can cause a decrease in visual acuity. Simple things like a corneal abrasion, a hyphema, or some of the more serious things we talked about before, like a retinal detachment or a retrobaba hematoma. The list is actually pretty big. All right, now let's talk about extraocular movements. Now here we're testing all the different rectus muscles in the orbit. But what if this is your exam, you have the patient look down, look up, and you see that this eye is not moving appropriately. In the setting of blunt facial trauma, this is concerning for an orbital blowout fracture. Here there's a fracture usually in the floor of the orbit and it causes the rectus muscle to get stuck in those fracture fragments and essentially pins the eye in place so that you'll have an abnormal extraocular movement exam. And you can confirm this on a CAT scan. Now for all these other structures, let's identify the anatomy and look at some abnormal findings. So we're gonna look at the cornea, the sclera and conjunctiva, we're gonna look at the lids, and also the lacrima. This is the part where we use the fluorescein to identify our abnormal findings and also use a slit lamp. So for the cornea, probably the most common finding in trauma is gonna be the corneal abrasion. And here you can see the fluorescein uptake right over the center. You should also make sure that you don't see any signs of foreign body. When we're looking at the sclera and conjunctiva, we might see subconjunctival hemorrhage. It's basically a bruise or a burst blood vessel, and it'll go away on its own. If it's a little worse, we might see some swelling, and that's called bloody chemosis. Not really concerning, except in this case where it goes all the way around the eye. It's just a higher predictor of other more serious injury. When we're looking at the anterior chamber, we might see a buildup of red blood cells. That's called hyphema, and that can be from either blunt or penetrating trauma. When we're looking at lid lacerations, the major decision point is whether we can repair them in the ED or we need to call opto. This one's pretty simple. I would repair that in the emergency room. Now this one has sub-Q fat coming through. That's actually a concerning finding because it means that there's been penetration into the orbit. So you need to do a further investigation for this one to make sure there's no globe injury or other more serious orbital injury. And anytime there's significant deformity to the lids, I would probably give opto a call, especially if it involves the medial canthus because you might need some stenting of this lacrimal duct. Okay, two other concerning tests. Positive Seidel's test means that when you do the fluorescein exam, you see vitreous leaking out of a hole in the orbit. 
that obviously means there's an open globe, so definitely call opto. Also, if you're doing the tonopen exam and you see a low intraocular pressure, again, very concerning for open globe. So number one, stop touching the eye and call opto immediately. Okay, so just to recap, if you do your full exam and use your other adjunctive tools, you should pretty much be able to come up with a diagnosis. And what we're looking for is ocular emergency, such as retrobalbar hematoma or any signs of open globe, such as teardrop pupil, positive side dialysis test, or low intraocular pressure. Here's the full list of abnormal exam findings and their associated diagnoses and some references. Thanks for joining us on EMN5.